good evening and or hello, I should say, because if you're watching this on YouTube, it could be morning, it could be midnight. Hello, I am Paula Scott of the Bluffton Center for Entrepreneurs for our program on hiring your first employee uh, by the numbers, which is to say this is not a human resources type presentation, but rather something to help you um, put someone on payroll um, to uh, handle all the federal and state requirements of having an employee and preparing to do those things uh, before you're actually in a position to hire someone. I am thrilled to have uh, Tracy Simons here from our neighbors, uh, Rickenbaugh and Steiner CPAs. I'm sitting here in Bluffton Town Hall. Uh, and so uh, Tracy is actually practically next door um, and uh, is joining us by Zoom. And let me uh, switch uh, my video here. So good evening, Tracy, how are you today? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and your background? Um, my name is Tracy, I live in Lipsick. Um, I've worked for Neil Rickenball since 2008. And I do a lot of um, tax returns, um, payroll taxes. I do payroll, bookkeeping, that sort of thing. I've been doing it for a long time. Before that, I worked for a small construction company and did his book work and his, got his information together for it to do his tax return. Um, I coached volleyball for about 15 years at Pandora. And, but other than that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I sat down to prepare for this, I thought, wow, okay. Well, you know, we want this to be about a half an hour. There's a lot of information that we could um, go over. Uh, so um, is there, is there a good place for people to go if they're trying to make sure they're covering all their bases? The best place to go is your um, irs.gov website, and that'll help you with all of your federal um, information. And the other place to go is ohio.gov, and that will help you with all of your state and local um, sorry, I'm getting a lot of notices on me. <laughs> on all of your state and local taxes that you that you need to do, and it helps with starting a business in Ohio. Um, there's a lot of information on the Ohio.gov website. Great, and and I will um, be creating a a handout um, based on our conversation um, so that. Anybody who's watching this can, can also have some of the links and things that um, they, they might need. And Tracy told me um, earlier today that there, there is on the Rickenbaugh and Steiner uh, website, there is a great page that provides a lot of links um, to for specific forms. Um, and, and so it's, uh, I'll, I'll put that on that sheet there as well so you, people can find that. Um, so I guess maybe we should start with the question of, all right, if I want someone to work for me, do they have to be an employee or what's, a, what's, what's the difference between a, sort of a contractor who works for you, who doesn't have to, uh, sometimes contractor um, conjures up like somebody with a hammer and a saw, okay, <laughs> but you can be a contract um, worker other than rather than an employee what does that mean um you can look at the department of labor for ohio and it'll explain to you what the diff what the qualifications are if they're an employee versus a contractor um simply if you if you hire a contractor and you want to give them a 1099 so that you don't have to withhold employee taxes, um, they need to be 
in business for what you hired them to do. In other words, they need to have other jobs that they do for you. They can't like, for instance, cleaning. If you hire someone to clean your office, if she's cleaning other businesses' offices because she has her own business, you can consider her a contractor. Or if you hire someone to um, shovel your parking lot, normally that's someone who does everyone's parking lots. He has his own business. But if you hire somebody to work in your office and that's all they do for that type of a job, you're telling them when to show up, you're telling them what hours they're working, you're telling them, you're treating them like an employee, then you need to make them an employee. If they're not doing that same job for you that they're and doing it for someone else, more than likely they are not a contractor. They're not in business. They don't have income and expenses. They just work for you. They should be an employee. Mm -hmm. okay. And there, there's a lot of rules and there's a lot of regulations. You can look it up on the Department of Labor website, but right. that's simply put. Okay, so let's start then with, I guess, I think of it, you know, let's break it down. What are the first things that the, the federal um, uh, requirements, what will I need to do first? In order to have employees, you have to apply for a federal ID number if you have not already. And that's the first step. And you can do that it's um, a form SS-4 and you can Google that and print it, put all the information on there and actually apply online. But if you print the form and you fill out the information that means you have everything you need to apply online. And that's, that's the first step. You have to have a federal ID number. Mm -hmm. Um, it, is it possible to do all of these things, uh, and, and not do them electronically? You can file, you can print the form SS4 and mail it in. It's easier to apply online, but you can do it by paper. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm very conscious of being on one side of the digital divide. And so I realized that there are a lot of people who, they're very comfortable with paper and stamps and there are other people who, um, you know, don't, uh, um, don't, you know, haven't seen a stamp in 10 years. <laughs> so Yeah, I do have a client who um, does most of his stuff, payroll stuff, um, he writes checks. Um, the Ohio, to, um, for Ohio taxes, they want you to file online. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible to talk to them and write them and request a waiver so that you don't have to file online. But in, unless you do request a waiver, you have to file online. They require it. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of timeline, like if I uh, uh, am thinking, okay, yeah, I, I want to hire someone, um, how much time do I really need to complete these steps? It takes, it's gonna take a couple of weeks. It, I've never applied for a federal ID number online, so I'm not sure if you get that immediately. Um, if you paper, if you send the form in by mail, I'm gonna say it's gonna take a couple of weeks to get your federal ID number. Um, when you go online to get your um, set up EFTPS, which is where you pay your taxes, your federal taxes or your payroll taxes, um, that's gonna take a couple of weeks for them to send you a PIN number, which is what you need to create a password. Um, Ohio Business Gateway is where you you can create that account immediately. Um, 
set it up and apply for a state withholding account number and you'll get that immediately. So basically you should give yourself a good month to get everything set up, but it's not, you know, you don't, good two weeks, you're gonna need a good two weeks at least, but I would give yourself a good month, 30 days. Okay, and um, how many steps are there with the state setting up? You said uh, register and um, register with the state through the business gateway and register with uh, unemployment compensation. Um, with unemployment, or so let me think, there's quite a few stuff. <laughs> First, you have to set up an account through Ohio Business Gateway, and you'll set up your username and password, and then you'll enter in your um, business information. Then you'll apply for a state withholding account, which you'll get that immediately. And then you need to, with unemployment, there's a form that you, and you can do it online through the ERIC system. It's, um, it's for employee, for employers, and you create an account and you um, submit a form to get a contribution rate. And that's going to take a little bit of time because they're not as, they're, not very quick at getting back with you and getting your contribution rate. Once you get the contribution rate, then you can file your state unemployment tax through Ohio Business Gateway. Um, school district goes with the state withholding account number. So as long as you have that, you can file those returns. Um, City doesn't require a registration. You just file. <clears throat> if your business is located within the city limits, then you need to withhold city tax on your employees. And you will just go into Ohio Business Gateway and file a city return for the location of your business. And um, how often do these transactions take place? How um... I, um, I know I've been self-employed. I'm familiar with quarterly filings of estimated taxes, but as an employer, how how often um, do these do these things take place? You are required to file quarterly, and it's due the by the 31st of the month following the end of the quarter. So the quarter ends March 31st. Your first quarterly payroll taxes are due April. 30th. And that's for federal and state. Um, those are when the forms are due and the payments are due quarterly unless you're required to file them monthly or um, with, with every pay, with every pay period. And okay. that's based on your tax liability. The state will let you know if you're a monthly, quarterly filer the irs um with your federal taxes if your tax liability for the quarter is less than twenty five hundred dollars you can pay it quarterly with your quarterly tax return the 941 form if it's more than twenty five hundred dollars then you are required to make your tax deposits monthly. And that's due on the 15th of the following month. So January 31st, gross wages, you'll pay those taxes February 15th, if, you, if it's over $2,500. They'll give you the first quarter, but then after that, that's when you'll know your liability is gonna be more than 2,500 then from that point forward, you'll need to file monthly. And then if it's, if you have to make them every pay period, th there's a look back period that the IRS has, and I would have to look that up to see what it is. I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, that would be 
based on that look back period, they the your tax liability for that look back period, if it's a certain amount, then they would require you to make a deposit every pay period. Mm -hmm. And that would depend on what day you're getting paid. If you get paid on a Friday, then your deposit would be due the following Wednesday. If you get paid on a Monday, then it's due on a Friday. But unless you have a really high liability, that's you would probably end up being a monthly or a quarterly filer. Okay. And um, I know everything has its own season. We're entering a period of, you know, like Medicare enrollment. We're recording this in November. Um, you know, we have tax season in, uh, in April. Is there, is there a unique calendar uh, for um, employment as well? You had mentioned something about the calendar year being July 1st through June 30th. That's for workman's comp. For workman's comp, okay. That's only workman's comp. You, um, they require you to do a true up for July 1st through June 30th. When you apply for workman's comp, they're going to bill you for what you're estimated payroll will be from the date of employment through the following June 30th. And you're going to have to pay that. And then come June 30th, you're going to file what's called a true up where you put your actual um, wages and then figure out what your premium was supposed to be. And if you paid more, then you'll get a refund. Or if you didn't pay enough because you underestimated your payroll, then you'll end up paying more with the true up. And that's the only one that has a different tax year. Everything else is January to December. Okay. Um, maybe this would be a good time then to talk about, um, you know, are there expenses uh, for the employer beyond wages? If I'm trying to decide if I can afford to hire this person, what do I need to keep in mind? Um, when you have an employee, you withhold Social Security, and that's like 6.2%. You as an employer have to match that. Um, Medicare is also withheld, and that's 1.45% of their wages, and the employer matches that. Um, you also have state unemployment tax, and that's strictly an employer tax, and that depends on the um, rate that the state gives you, and it's usually high at first until they see how much your wages are, if you've laid people off, if you make claims against your unemployment account. Um, so they're usually gonna start you off with a higher rate and then they'll, every year, they'll send you a new contribution rate amount. That's another expense. Workman's comp is strictly an employer expense. And that again is based on, you're given a, a rate based on your what your work you do. Like if you're in construction, you're gonna have a higher rate, obviously. If you are a secretary, you're gonna have a lower workman's comp rate. So based on what your employee is doing, workman's comp is going to classify your employees and then you'll pay based on whatever rate that employee, they give that your employees. Um, they they set that up that you can pay that you're prepaying it for the year and they estimate what your payroll is going to be based on the previous year and you can set it up that you can pay it annually or quarterly and they'll send you a bill every quarter or they'll send you a you know one bill if you decide you want to pay it annually and you can decide that when you sign up for it 
and they give you a schedule that says this is how much you're going to pay every quarter or once a year. They usually send it out like the first of January or July. Um, you also have a federal unemployment tax, and that is based on it's I believe it's like point. It's point zero zero seven of up to the first seven thousand in wages. So you'll pay that's a tax that's strictly an employer tax. And it's point zero zero seven of the first seven thousand dollars that for each employee. Um SUDA, the state unemployment tax is based on the first nine thousand dollars for each employee. So once you pay that, whatever your student rate tax is for the first $9,000 that of wages, then you won't owe any student tax on that employee anymore once it's reached the 9,000. Um, and I, that's your main payroll tax expenses. That's just for the employer. And then you would have to pay in what you withheld from their from their paychecks. Okay, wow. Yeah, um, it's funny. I've looked at pay stubs for a very long time. And you know, I'm con you know, concerned about all those numbers. But I think to make that transition from being an employee to an employer um, is 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 a big one. And uh, you you don't know um, what it involves until um, you take a peek. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about um, uh, payroll systems and um, record keeping. Um, wh what's the what's the starting point for that? Um, you can, as far as doing uh, creating payroll checks, you. Um, QuickBooks is one option. They're going to charge you a fee to do payroll because it's you have to first have to buy the program, but then you also have to enroll in their payroll because you're going to be constantly upgrading and downloading tax tables. So there's an annual fee. Um, you can hire an accountant to do your payroll checks. Um, you can, or a payroll service. And I, um, that's where you're gonna get your payroll from. And is uh, trying to think what else. What, once you do that, then you, are going to want to hire an accountant to do your quarterly payroll taxes uh, just so and then they'll do your w-2s at the year end they'll do all of your year-end forms um i know we have some clients that they do their own quarterlies and we just do the year ends um a payroll service will do the paychecks they'll also do your quarterlies and your year ends it's very convenient um, I think some banks will do payrolls quickly for you. Um, I'm not sure of any other, I've never used any other program for doing payroll other than QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this is really just a very brief introduction. Um, what our half hour is letting us squeeze into um, you know, the program, uh, you know, this is intended to be general information for our viewers. And um, I hope you'll, uh, uh, you know, take advantage of the online resources that, that we're going to share um, in, our, in our video description on YouTube. And, um, you know, give the Bluffton Center for Entrepreneurs a call if you have additional questions. Um, thank you, Tracy, so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.
Nice to um, meet with you face to face. We're yeah. usually talking about one brief question and off we go to do other things. Or we're emailing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. Um, this is just one of a series of um, programs that we have uh, on YouTube um, about once a month. We are addressing topics of interest to entrepreneurs. And if you are thinking about starting a business or have a business in Allen County, Hancock County, Hardin County, or Putnam County, Ohio, um, we are here to uh, help you network, to help you find mentors, to help you uh, deal with technology, et cetera. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's been very fun this evening. Look forward to uh, talking with all of you and thanks for joining us.